Welcome to this little demo of JetBrains MPS. In this screencast I want to show you how MPS can be used more or less as a normal Java programming environment. I will show more advanced language extension stuff later. So let's start with just simply creating a normal Java class. I've some new solution here. A solution is basically a you know, project kind of thing. And I can create a new class. And I can give um, a name to this class. I can call it uh, Taschenrechner, which is the German word for calculator. You'll see why I did this in a minute. And um, uh, you can uh, you can basically, okay, let's say create a variable here in i equals 2 plus 3. You can create a method here, which you might want to call uh, plus, which adds two numbers in a comma in b. And then it returns a plus b. Sorry, there's a truck going around in front of my window. And I make it an int. So this is simply Java programming, nothing, nothing really special here. What is interesting is that if you do projectional editing, you actually really edit the tree directly. So although this looks like text, it's actually really a direct projection of the tree. So, uh, but the point is that MPS has done a very good job of making this treeness useful and, 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 and all, but editing is very convenient nonetheless. For example, I can put a parenthesis here and, uh, you know, uh, sorry, that was the wrong one, and uh, put parentheses around the three and then just continue, right? So I've just refactored this structurally and I've kind of almost just typed it. Very good. Now, the other problem is infrastructure integration. Um, you know, this is not stored as text. This is stored as an XML file. And if you want to do diff merge and other version control integration stuff, uh, it might be a problem because you can't use your textual grep and other diff tools that are supplied with, uh, let's say, Subversion or Git. So what do we do about this? Well, let's look at another example here. I have um, a little um, Amazon SimpleDB database uh, kind of thing where this defines tables. They are called domains in SimpleDB. And here you can see a field uh, called Alter, which is German for age. So let's change this and call it age. And now you can see on the left here that we've changed something, right? We've changed the property value of the name field of our field guy here. And we can now uh, show the changes view, do a refresh, and we'll see that our demo.mps, that's the you know file which contains this database definition, has changed. So let's look at the diff. And it says uh, here, if we scroll this up, the property name for this kind of node has been set to age. And of course, we can now commit this and, um, you know, everything is fine. And um, we, uh, of course, get the same you know, when, when stuff comes in. So MPS comes with its own version control integration to make teamwork feasible. Now, let's lo look a little bit more closely what we've got here. This is, uh, an, if you will, an external DSL, a DSL to define table definitions that can be used with Amazon SimpleDB. So this is actually not very, you know, not very fancy. This is basically just, you know, the usual entities example, kind of. But if we look here, you can see that um, we use this database definition here. And, um, hello. And uh, specifically, we can create instances of these tables, you know, so customer C equals new customer kind of here. This is more or less an instance creation of this kind of thing. And we can use these things as if they were Java elements, you know, we create a new instance by specifying a unique ID and then specifying values for the fields. And of course, we can only select those fields which are defined in the customer. And then we can use the put um, command here to um, store this thing in the actual simple Amazon SimpleDB. Um, also, we can, you know, we can iterate over things, create these, you know, as, as unnamed expressions without storing them in a variable. We can then also query our database, you know, you know it's kind of uh, SQL-ish thing from customer where name equals n. Name is, of course, again, this field. n is the variable defined here. And then uh, we can for each over the result. And then again, if we access the values, we get this integration here. So we've extended Java with native constructs to work with SimpleDB. And um, so again, we get the complete IDE support as you would expect it. Now, this is quite nice. Um, this is basically Java with my own extensions. 
And it's important to understand that um, MPS, uh, again, comes with an implementation of Java that you can use and extend. Here I've extended it with this Amazon SimpleDB stuff. But um, the base language, as they call their version of Java, comes with its own, let's say, default extensions. For example, um, you can use tuples. Um, you know, you can have a method here, get three values, which actually has three return elements, three return types, right? This is a tuple, three tuple, which you return here, and then this test calls it and then uses the index operation like an arrays to get the nth value from this tuple. Also, you can have extension methods. You know, here is a class car, which has an operation drive, not very uh, fancy, but uh, here is a test case, which now calls, you know, here's a new car, it calls the diagnose method on the car. How does that work? Car doesn't define a diagnose method. However, here is um, a so-called extension method container, which defines additional methods for existing classes without invasively changing those classes. This is something you might know from Scala, Implicits, or from C Sharp. Another thing is that uh, um, there is support for builders uh, you know, builders are used for hierarchically assembling or for assembling hierarchical structures. Here I'm building a, a uh, you know, swing uh, frame. You should be able to run this. I hope it's uh, generated. Here you go. Here is the swing window with, you can see, the frame, the label, and the button. And of course, if I press the button, the thing closes. Why? Because I have a property on my Let's stop this. A property on my um, on my button here, an on-click property, which takes a closure, right? So it this is a, a closure, um, and the way this is defined here is um, that you define a property whose type is a function or function type um, that takes a JFrame and returns nothing, and then basically this is uh, the implementation. My point is the base language that comes with MPS, the extended Java, has closures. And it also has uh, the usual nice collection stuff, right? You can have a list and you can iterate over it and, um, you know, you can sort it, you can uh, look for an element and so on. So this is um, what you would expect from any modern programming language. So um, let me give you one more example of what you can do. Um, here is another, uh, here's a Java interface. And um, you can create a method. Let's say there is the method add, which takes an int e and then int j. And now um, you want to have a pre or post condition to make sure this thing uh, is semantically executed semantically correctly. So you can press add contract and add a precondition, which says positive, which basically says i must be greater than zero and j must be greater than zero. And maybe there is a, um, you know, a, um, a post condition uh, which says um, that uh, the result is, oops, uh, is i plus j. So you can see that we've extended the existing Java with pre and post conditions. You can use this special expression result in a post condition, which of course actually should be an int, which uh, refers to the return value, and you can. Uh, access the parameters here. Now the trick that we've implemented in a way that if you have a class that implements this interface, um, like this one, C, which implements the calculator interface, of course then you have to um, add implement methods, right? You need to implement the add methods. You can't see anything about the contract here. Nonetheless, in the resulting low-level generated code, which is then compiled with Java C, um, you will of course get the actual test or you know the, the checking of the pre and post conditions and you can't avoid it there is no way how you as a programmer can do something here that will prevent this test from running okay so this was a very very quick demo of uh, what the cool stuff you can do with MPS um, in the next screencast I will show you how to build a very simple language extension it's probably going to be two screencasts because uh, I'm limited to 10 minutes on YouTube so the next one will probably explain structure and editor and the final one type system and generator. Thanks for watching so far.